welcome to a two-part video series on sculpting with images in the ZBrush core. So in this first video, we're going to take a look at how we can import images and use them on the floor grid. Much like the project I currently have loaded here, you can see that I have a sphere in the middle and we have images of a skull, the front, the top, and the side. But as we scroll around to the back, you can see the image switches to a back image, to the other side view, and even the bottom of a skull. This project comes shipped with the ZBrush Core. To get to this project, I go to my light box and I click on this project right here that's called Grid. So by double clicking on this project, it will load into your ZBrush Core. I want to start fresh so we can redo this project from the beginning. So I'm actually going to load the Dynamesh Sphere 64 next to it. So I'm going to tap on that sphere and then I'm going to double click. You can see that ZBrush asks if you'd like to save the current project that you're working on. I'm going to go ahead and say no. And now we have a new sphere with no images attached to our grid. So let's take a look at how we can import any image. To do this, we're going to go to our texture palette and we're going to import. What this will do is launch your browser so you can find any image that you may want to import. In this case, I already have some images of the skull and I want to bring them into the ZBrush core. You can of course bring in something you might find on the internet or anything you've taken a photo of or maybe even some drawing or sketching that you've done of a particular character. So I'm just going to double click to load this skull reference and you can see that image is now loaded within the ZBrush core. You can see this image has a front view and a side view of a skull all in one image. So what I want to do now is assign this to my floor grid. I'm going to do this by going to our draw palette. I'm going to click on this little icon on the top left and drag this over to my right tray. This is docking that draw palette over here because we're going to be using this quite a bit within this video. So you can see we have a front back up, down, and left, right. I'm going to click on that front back, and now we have a map one and a map two. So this is correlating to the front, and this is correlating to the back. So I'm going to click on this map one, and now tap on that image that we've imported, and you can see as I navigate to the front, you can see this image that looks like the front and side of a skull. So let's see what else you can do with the image and the surface. So you'll find some other sliders through here. The first two that we want to take note of is our E enhance factor. And you can see by moving the slider to left and right, it is changing the opacity of our mesh so that you can see through it when sculpting to have a better reference of your images. The next slider is controlling the opacity of the images that are actually being attached to the floor grid. Now comes some more fun stuff. We have the capability to flip. So this is vertically flipping our image within that grid. We can rotate at a 90 degree. We can even inverse our image so it looks like we're working with x-rays. We have a scale adjustment. We also have the capability to offset during horizontal or offset vertical. And then last, we have our angle slider, which is just free rotation 180 degrees in either direction. Now the really great feature within the floor grid is this adjust button. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. And what this does is pull our image up and we can actually now crop our images. So there's some sliders here to the right to allow us to crop our images. Or we can grab these little red circles by clicking and dragging over and deciding what part of the image is important to me. So at this point, I only want the front of the skull. So you can see I can select just that portion, now tap OK, and now we only have the front of our skull image in the front view of our floor grid. So now we want to add the side view. So that's our left and right. I'm going to click on map one. And my image that I imported happened to already have a side view. So we're going to tap on that. And now we have 
this image to the right of my screen. I'm going to go ahead and tap Adjust, and now let's fix our cropping control to only crop out the left side so that the side that has the profile view of our skull will show up when we hit OK. And now we have a reference image of the front and the side of the skull. The last thing I might want to do here is put an image from above of the skull. So again, I'm going to go to my texture and I'm going to tap on import. I happen to have an image called top and we're going to open that and you can see it's a top view of a skull. So now in the map one of my up down, I'm going to tap that and then I'll select that image and now we have a great reference plane to begin building a human skull. And this is the basics of just importing any image that you would like to have as a reference as you work within the ZBrush core. Thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in part two where we begin to sculpt with these images using the DynaMesh feature.